Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today TV. I'm Sakshi Patra, and this is Market Today, a show where we'll help you understand all the latest cues on the D Street, the way the benchmark indices are moving, what's the sectoral action looking like, and which are the stocks that are buzzing the most in trade today. Of course, it's the first trading session of the new financial year, FI24. So, what is it that you should keep? in focus in this year as a whole so that you are able to generate alpha protect capital and make huge returns on your investments in equities that's going to be the focus of our discussion today we'll also have experts to help you understand what should be a strategy that you should follow in this entire year to stay on top of your game when it comes to investing in equities but first up a quick check on how the markets are doing at this point in time well halfway through uh, the trading session today the markets are actually flattish with a negative bias 17,350 Four is the level at which the Nifty is trading at. Uh, it's a meager five-point decline that you can see, a 0.03% of a loss. The Sensex also hovering about 37, 38 points lower in trade at 58,952. That's again a loss of about 40 odd points right here. Talk about the other major indices, the Nifty Bank, for example, the mid cap and the small cap 100 indices also, for example, the Nifty Bank is higher by a quarter percent. So you can see a jump of 104 points right there, 40,714 uh, is the level at which the Nifty Bank is looking like right now. So that's supporting the sentiments right now in far as, as the markets are concerned. The mid cap and the small cap 100 indices, that's also the place where some bit of buying action can be seen. So slight outperformance can actually be seen on the broader market space. You can see the Nifty mid cap 100 index up by 0.3% odd, 87 points up a jump for that one. The Nifty uh, small cap 100 index also, or the small cap 50 index, first you look at uh, over here, 0.6% of an upside is what you can see. So sharp buying action coming in for the small cap stocks. In terms of the sectors as well, uh, of all the Nifty 50 stocks, you do have the mid caps um, so definitely supporting and the banking constituents also coming into four. So you do have the Nifty bank, but apart from that, autos are in focus today. The energy stocks are in focus today. Metals, for example, let's keep an eye out on all of these sectors as well. As to how are they doing at this point in time uh, also the India Wix that's one index that you need to keep in check uh, that's about 0.3% uptick, so not too much of a worry. The metals are declining in trade, 0.4% odd. Apart from this, you also have the royalty stocks, for example, in focus. That's uh, the uh, the auto stocks uh, itself, you know, up by 1.3%. They're reacting to the numbers that we've been getting of the sales figures uh, in the month of March. Uh, now, royalty stocks also up by 0.4%. So, slight buying action can actually be seen on all across uh, them as well. Let's also keep an eye out on the top gainers and the losers at this point in time. As far as the nifty gainers and the top losers on the stocks are concerned right now so you do have these auto names like hero moto corp uh, that's reported sharp uh, you know increase in the numbers of sales that uh, the company has done in the month of march so three percent three and a half percent uptick for that one maruti suzuki up to and a half percent coal india up to and a half percent so the energy stocks are in focus as well ONGC, for example, is up by 2%, of course, led by the push in the crude oil prices, of course, led by the kind of production cuts that have been announced by the OPEC plus community. Uh, Bajaj Auto, again, another counter from the uh, auto space that's up by almost 2%. What's not doing well today is uh, stocks like, say, BPCL, the OMCs are actually uh, dragging today, Apollo Hospitals, Adani Group stocks, some of them are, uh, you know, kind of declining today, Adani Enterprises down by 1.5%. Infosys, Hindalco, these are the other names that are actually declining in trade. But time now to welcome our guest on the show, Mr. Abhinash Gorak Shakar joins in. Uh, he's the Director of Research at Profit Mass Securities. Welcome, Mr. Gorak Shakar, and thank you so much for taking the time out uh, for discussion on this first trading session of FI24. Well, I want to begin by understanding from you what is the sense that you're getting at the beginning of this new financial year? Will it be a good year for investors of equities? Yeah, I think uh, first of all, Sakshi, thank you for inviting me. And uh, most importantly, you know, this is going to be a very, uh, uh, you know, challenging year. As I mentioned on your shows earlier also, that 2023-24 is going to be a year where uh, you may see a lot of volatility in the markets, considering the fact that, you know, this is a year where we see almost six to seven state elections. And coming next year, we see the general election. So I think markets are going to be extremely volatile. Uh, you will have to be extremely selective. And obviously, now the main uh, you know, the key number which everybody will be monitoring in the coming weeks will be the quarter number, you know, how companies stand out in their year performance, uh, the kind of commentary they give. So I think markets are definitely poised well to do well uh, in the coming months. But I think it's going to be more stock specific and it's going to be more uh, towards domestic focused sectors because these are the sectors where one is witnessing a lot of demand. 
especially you know from sectors like auto auto components capital goods uh, mm-hmm. building products cement so i think uh, investors need to keep a close watch on these sectors and obviously take positions accordingly but i think we should not uh, be uh, you know we also be completely unaware of the fact that global headwinds are yet challenging and therefore the markets would find a little bit of resistance on the upside so it's a good beginning for the new financial year but i think we would see a lot of volatility which i think investors need to take into mind definitely now we, what we've also come uh, to news with in this new week is that the opec uh, plus nations announced uh, the oil output cuts totaling 1.2 million barrels a day uh, and that was announced on sunday and therefore as a reaction we saw the brent crude hitting the highest in uh, nearly a month at open it was trading at 85.5 dollars a barrel now the move has also brought in fresh concerns around inflationary pressures back to the fore adding to the worries that higher prices and could actually lead to another uh, round of aggressive monetary tightening policy by central banks and that could perhaps again tip global uh, economy into recession are these fears for real how do you view uh, the kind of cuts that have been announced by opec plus and what kind of an impact could this have on the overall economy and on the markets as well so yeah, i think uh, sakshi whenever crude prices go up they definitely tend to be negative for uh, economy like india especially because you know we are net importers and uh, obviously if crude prices rise that actually increases our foreign exchange bill uh, to a large extent it actually upsets our current account deficit so i think uh, the rise in crude prices was completely unexpected and i think uh, crude touching 84 85 dollars a barrel is definitely a little concerning because in case uh, you know crude prices uh, inch up further then uh, that would obviously impact even inflationary trends because uh, inflation numbers are still uh, pretty high the, uh, the rbi wants to bring them down so i think you could expect uh, another 25 basis uh, hike in the coming policy and as far as the overall uh, you know rise in crude prices is concerned it could obviously mean that inflation concerns all across the globe would get elevated so i think it's going to be a little challenging i think hopefully we, uh, we should believe that you know crude prices should settle down but if in case they go up due to supply crunch fears then i think it could definitely have some impact on the overall health of uh, almost all the global economies which are already mm. fragile and even for india it could be a little bit of a problem right now you did say that you know it could be a challenging year for financial uh, for investors of equities if in fi24 and especially keeping in mind that there is uh, always a macroeconomic uncertainty to look at as an overhang on the markets one will have to really be selective about the positions they take and select stocks as well another important factor that i wanted to understand uh, you know in fi23 we actually saw 2.5 lakh crore rupees of bonanza record dii buying that was a saving grace on d street in fi23 three for investors meanwhile we actually saw foreign institutional investors becoming net sellers for the second consecutive uh, financial year they actually net sold uh, shares worth over 40400 crores this fiscal uh, what i want to understand is will fii's return this year can that be a supportive factor that one can bet on in fi24 yeah i think uh, sakshi for fii's to return i think it would be a little uh early because i think as uh, all of us know that uh, you know the fed governor mr powell has said that after uh, the recent rate hike possibly another rate hike in uh, this uh, in, a, in this year is possible so i think as and when you know when there is a pause in interest rates in the us possibly that is a time when you could see some flows coming back to india i think uh, on a very b- broader basis i would believe that after november or december we could see flows coming back in 2024 but 2023 is going to be challenging i think we'll have to depend on domestic sip flows which continue to remain strong and i think fis would continue to pull out money so that definitely would remain a challenge so at least in the very near term uh, one can't expect fis to make a very strong comeback considering that interest rates have started moving up in the us a lot of money has got shifted to debt there so i think we'll have to wait for at least another you know maybe comfortably two or three quarters before we could see a strong flow coming in from the fis once again in the markets but longer term i think they can't ignore us Uh, in the near term i think challenge will come okay where exactly do you think that leadership will emerge in case market stage a recovery in fi24 which are the sectors that you are overweight and also underweight on yeah i think uh, first of all uh, you know sectors where we continue to be underweight i would believe that the metal sector is still not uh, completely recovered uh, mm. despite the fact that uh, there's a lot of talk of domestic demand infrastructure spending i think the key trigger for metal companies is price increase and which i think is unlikely to happen till china comes back in the global metal market as everyone is aware 
China is the largest producer and the consumer of metals. So I think metals is one area where we'll prefer to avoid. And I think uh, the second sector which we would be a little cautious is IT, you know, because after the US banking crisis, uh, one would like to know the commentary from most of the Indian companies as to how the BFSI basket performs. And on the positive side, I think we are positive on almost all the domestic sectors like uh, domestic capital goods, uh, the automotive sector, uh, the real estate sector, the cement sector, and obviously the building product sector. You know, where are, there are lots of pockets of opportunities where investors can, you know, uh, acquire a stocks even at the current levels. I think one needs to be very selective here, try to bet on the large cap names and the market leaders here. Because in this market, I think it's always better to uh, play on quality and avoid, uh, you know, the micro caps or the mid caps here because volatility in the markets is going to be pretty high. And obviously, large caps will take care of the volatility much better than the small caps. Okay. And any particular stocks that you think can emerge as great buys this year? Uh, any stocks that are on top of your radar as well? Yeah, I think my guess is that... Uh, you know, typically, if you ask me from the capital goods, we still continue to believe that Larson and Tudor looks uh, very attractive considering okay. the order book and the exhibition kind of track record. And from the automotive space, we still believe the commercial vehicle sector, you know, both Tata Motors and Ashok Leyland. Hmm. Uh, these are companies where I believe at least uh, 20 to 25 percent upside looks possible because the commercial vehicle industry is in a very strong shape and plus with infrastructure spending likely to come in in this year, uh, you would be seeing a lot of demand for trucks which already is running at its peak level. So I think uh, Tata Motors, Ashok Leland from the commercial vehicle space and LNT, you know, from the capital goods and from the infra space would be good bets. Uh, in case you get a chance to acquire them at lower levels, I think that would fit in properly in your portfolio. Hmm, okay, understood. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to ask you, I mean, like between the two sectors that were emerging as uh, clear top buys earlier, the banking space and the IT space on the back of recovery that we were seeing and then again we saw this speed bump of uh, banking crisis emerging, again putting a question mark on the revenues that could be hit and margins that could be hit. How does one approach these two sectors in FY24? No, I think uh, banking is also one sector where I believe a lot of growth is uh, likely to flow in. First of all, you know, this year, uh, credit growth was about 15-16%. And our sense is even for the next year, that is for FY24, uh, we could see levels of at least 13-14% overall credit growth, which means most of the private sector banks could grow by at least 18-20%. to 20%. So I think, you know, the uh, business scenario for banks is very strong, at least for the next two years. So I think uh, almost all the private sector banks, almost all the PSU banks, the large cap names like SBI, Canara Bank, uh, you know, ICICI Bank, I think definitely look well positioned. So I think investors should definitely not uh, forget to include even these stocks in their portfolio. It looks pretty strong for all these companies, at least for the next 12-18 months. All right, understood that. What about, uh, you know, the mid and the small caps, the broader markets, how does one approach these? Do you think they will be uh, performing better? They have had, uh, you know, a long period of underperformance. Will they return to power? I think uh, my sense is actually, you know, the mid caps and the small caps should take a little more time to recover because uh, clearly uh, a lot of liquidity has moved out, out of them. And I think, uh, you know, if one need, has to invest here, then one has to take a slightly longer term horizon. I think uh, maybe, you know, if one has a, a time horizon for maybe the next 12 to 18 months, one could definitely, uh, you know, look at uh, uh, buying some good mid cap or small cap kind of businesses, which are available at very attractive valuations. Hmm. But the key problem and the key issue with investors is that they need to give in a little more time and a little more, uh, you know, patience here because obviously uh, if mid cap has underperformed significantly, and that has actually made investors lose a lot of money, at least at this point of time. All right, understood that. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Gaurav Shaka, for being with us on the show and discussing with us all these insights about uh, where exactly uh, can money be made in FI24 and the strategies that investors mm -hmm. must follow as we begin this new financial year. Again, uh, on an uncertain note and uh, with a lot of overhangs, but in case uh, one is a smart investor, there are still a lot of opportunities that can, one can bet on is what uh, we've understood from your discussion today. We'll continue to speak with you to get more insights on markets as the days follow as well. Right now, uh, the Sensex is down by about 30 odd points. The Nifty hovering about flat with a negative bias at 17,353. Keep an eye out on all other kind of moves that we are looking at in the markets. And for that, you need to subscribe to this channel of Business Today TV. And also continue to engage with us on our other social media platforms. That's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. Until then, many thanks for tuning in.
mother and entrepreneur, a shark, and now the, one of the most successful women in business. I'm joined by Miss Vinita Singh of Sugar Cosmetics. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Very excited. You don't give me my award before I do this, so I had to do it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> don't let it 